now at 11. Are you getting more robocalls? The government shutdown may be to blame. Apartments across the Portland metro area identified as brothels in a nationwide stand. A cougar sighting shuts down a popular sledding spot on Mount Hood. And a local measles outbreak is spreading now. The churches, schools, and other locations where you could have been exposed. Plus, the Unipiper is on a mission. How his new nonprofit is trying to keep Portland weird. Oh, Laurel, look, we are going to begin tonight with the snow and freezing rain in the gorge and a few crashes on a slick I-84. Now much of the interstate from east of Multnomah Falls out to the Dalles has a dusting of snow, as you can see from this video. Yeah, you saw those flakes are big flakes. This is a live picture now from our photographer station right out there overlooking Interstate 84 in Hood River. We found it was really slow going around Cascade Locks tonight. As you can see here, though, the snow mostly stopped. You can see the pavement is wet. We're also going to take a look now up in the streets of Hood River as we pan over. Thanks to our photographer John out there and you can see it's still uh, pretty slushy, but people are uh, walking on the sidewalk there. You see the footprints in the snow, so kind of a pretty sight up there tonight. All right, good time to bring in Chris McGinnis. He is in for Matt tonight. So what do you what do you think? And you're looking at the, the, the radars there. What's it saying about this wintry weather? Well, let's go ahead and check it out right over the last three hours. I can tell you this. The heaviest of the snow and wintry precipitation in the gorge has already fallen, so that's the lion's share of the wintry weather we were going to see tonight. The back edge of that has already lifted pretty much north of the Columbia River and is working its way up into the uh, Washington Cascades right now. We'll give you a closer look with the live scan and we still have, of course, some light snowflakes around Hood River and out towards uh, Carson and Cascade Locks. But I can tell you that the precipitation rates are really, really starting to die down. So that's good news. That said, the winter weather advisory does continue until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning for this area in purple. So that includes a good chunk of the Columbia River Gorge. And that's because the temperatures are marginal right now. I mean, we're right around that freezing mark. As we check out future cast again, zoomed in tight on the gorge. Light precipitation continues overnight. We might see one more wave of mixed rain or rain or mixed snow and, and freezing rain. But eventually it looks like that all the tapers off by early tomorrow morning. And at the same time, we do anticipate the temperatures warming up just a little bit. So that'll be some good news as we get into the mid morning hours. That said, I can show you some of the other uh, cameras out there. Cascade Locks has got some snow cover. ID4 out near the Dalles also has some snow cover right now. We'll keep you posted on this and have a look to a wet Portland forecast coming up in just a few minutes, guys. It's looking more like January out yeah. there. Thank you, Chris. I didn't no idea that this was some really big, huge thing, you know, internationally. I think it's pretty crazy, uh, to be honest. New tonight, neighbors shocked to hear they were living right next door to brothels. The people behind the operations were busted in an FBI takedown. Police went undercover in Portland and across the country to shut these brothels down. KGW's Mike Benner live in Portland for us with the details. Mike. Yeah, Dan, we're outside the Museum Place Apartments in downtown Portland. One of the uh, apartments inside this building here behind me has been identified as one of the illegal uh, brothels. The women who were offering uh, sex services inside these brothels have been brought over from China. They're the victims in all this, and tonight they're being cared for by the FBI, among others. But the people who these women worked for, they're in a lot of trouble tonight. The Carriage House Apartments in Tiger, home to Chris Reitenauer for more than a decade. It's a nice apartment complex. They just remodeled uh, you know, the outside here not too long ago. He says no problems whatsoever, aside from what was going on in apartment 109 as recently as last year. Reitenauer says he noticed a lot of men coming and going from the apartment. I definitely suspected something was going on, just the number. People don't have that many friends guy friends in particular. Federal authorities tell us a brothel was being run out of the apartment, as was the case at numerous other apartments across the Portland metro. In fact, KGW obtained this video from the feds. It shows men coming and going from a Beaverton apartment complex. It's pretty crazy, uh, to be honest. Federal agents say Johns would go online looking for sexual encounters. They'd find phone numbers to call or text. The Johns would then be directed to area apartments where women brought in from China were waiting and oftentimes wearing little to nothing. The Asian ladies would be walking. I thought very strange in their pajama bottoms. You know, I thought very weird um, walking out to meet somebody. Six people are now facing racketeering charges. Two of them believed to be bosses who ran day-to-day -day ops arrested in the Portland area. Relief for Chris Reidenauer, 
who was living right above one of these illegal brothels. You know, they got kids and that kind of stuff that live in here and, as well, so you don't need that criminal element. Yeah, as we mentioned, two of the six people who are facing charges were arrested uh, here in the Portland area. The alleged ringleader of this whole thing was busted in Canada. Another person arrested in California, and authorities are still trying to track down the remaining two. Back to you in the studio. Boy, Mike, that is disturbing. Glad they're busting a lot of those ringleaders. Thank you. A popular spot for sledding on Mount Hood was temporarily shut down today after someone spotted a possible cougar in the area. KGW's Catherine Cook made the trip to Snow Bunny Park in government camp and has the latest from state wildlife officials. After a cougar killed a woman near Mount Hood last summer, wildlife officials aren't taking any chances with reported sightings, especially in areas like this where kids and families like to come. Josiah, move! Could you push me? The Akameko family drove an hour and a half from Vancouver to Snow Bunny Park on Mount Hood for one reason. They love to sled. Just ask eight-year-old Reuben. Well, I really enjoy it, and um, it's fun for me, and I would like living in Mount Hood. But late this afternoon, when they first pulled into the park, a state police officer turned them away. He just said that the park is closed due, due to cougar sighting. With the park closed, OSP tried to find the big cat, or at least cougar tracks. I was like, well, that's crazy, because <laughs> we wanted to go sledding. A spokesman with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife says a photographer spotted what she thought was a cougar while hiking near the park. When she encountered the animal, she said its ears were back. While ODFW can't say what she saw was actually a cougar, the woman wasn't taking any chances. She pulled up her tripod, backed away, and made it out safely. In September, a Gresham woman hiking in the Mount Hood National Forest was attacked and killed by a cougar, Oregon's first fatal cougar attack. Wildlife officials say the state's cougar population is growing, and older cougars are pushing the younger ones out of established territory into new areas. On this night, the Akameko family isn't too worried. Well, we figure since the park is open, you know, it should be okay. On Mount Hood, Catherine Cook, KGW News. Here's a health alert for you tonight. More measles cases in Clark County as the outbreak grows to 14 confirmed cases, all of them children. And tonight, public health officials worry there might be three more infected kids. So far, 12 of the confirmed cases involve children between 1 and 10 years old and two kids between 11 and 18 years old. Officials confirmed all but one of the kids were unvaccinated and it's not clear if the other patient had received the vaccine or not. Measles can be deadly and is preventable with the vaccine and it's very easy to spread. Measles is one of the most contagious uh, viruses we know about. If you are susceptible, if you haven't been immunized, uh, you, can, and you can go into a room that somebody with measles had been in and left two hours earlier and still get the disease. That gives you pause, doesn't it? There are dozens of places where people may have been exposed to measles by these children. That includes these five schools, Cornerstone Christian Academy, Vancouver Home Connection, Hearthwood Elementary, Image Elementary, and Eisenhower Elementary. We have the full list of places they went, like PDX, and more information about what to do if you think you've been exposed on KGW.com. Just into the newsroom, we're learning now the names of the investors behind the Portland Diamond Project and that push to bring Major League Baseball to the Rose City. So we already knew about this guy, Seattle Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson and his wife, Sierra, both investors. Now we can add former MLB player OSU Beaver and Portland native Darwin Barney, along with his dad and brother and 11 other families and people pitching in for a stadium and team here in Portland. Now our news partners at the Oregonian reporting Backers have pledged more than $1.3 billion, but all told, the final price tag could look closer uh, to $2.5 billion. So they still have some money to raise here. We have the full list of investors at KGW.com.